Oh, look at that junk. Oh man. Got it. What's up guys? Today's gonna be a video about replacing the power steering rack in my 2004 Toyota Tundra. It's got a 3.4 liter manual transmission, four x four, at 192,000 miles on it. The reason I'm replacing it is because the passenger side started leaking pretty good. The inner tie rod end has a lot of play and it's also almost corroded through, which I'll show you later in this video, or rusted through for that matter. Now, normally I, I don't like using aftermarket racks because I, working as a mechanic, every time I install remanufactured racks, it's, it's like a dice roll, you know, hit or miss if they're gonna be good or not or how long they're gonna last. But uh, so I decided to go with a new one. Now, one of the perks of doing YouTube videos and all that is occasionally companies will reach out to you and send you free stuff. So uh, this in this case, Max Speeding Rods, they reached out to me on Instagram and said, hey, is there anything that we sell that you'd like to do a video on? I'm like, oh yeah, I do need a rack. So they sell this rack for $200. And I was checking out some comparable ones on eBay and Amazon. You can spend anywhere from like $160 to $200 for a new or remanufactured rack. Yeah, I was looking, love to put an OE in here, but they're about, the cheapest one I saw was 500, and then I saw them up to like $1,300 too. So I'll try and plug that part number in for you. This is made in China, to be expected, right? For 200 bucks. Uh, but the quality of it actually seems pretty good. Uh, the, I checked out the threads, no damage on those. All the splines look healthy. And these uh, bellows are made out of like a hard plastic, plasticky rubber which is great because the, the China rubber that they use on these, a lot of time they get super dry rotted and just uh, you know fall apart prematurely. So I'll be curious to see how these hold up. It's got stainless steel band clamps on it. You can see they put uh, torque marks, uh, torque paint on everything. When you know showing that it's been torqued or tightened down, you would hope the bushings seem high quality. Again, we'll see on those because a lot of time the Chinese rubber just doesn't last. Uh, but yeah, nice, nice band or uh, spring clamps on here too. I love those spring clamps. And yeah, so overall, it seems pretty good quality. Let me uh, tear into this and I'll show you what's going on with my rack and give you some tips on how to replace it. Make sure you set the parking brake, chalk the rear wheels, and get it jacked up on the front cross member. And then you can lower down on some jack stands. I'm gonna try something new since I won't be able to do an alignment on this truck until after the weekend. I got my steering wheel perfectly centered. And then on both sides, I'm gonna pick a reference point. So in this case, it's the sway bar mounting um, bracket there. I'm gonna bring it down till it kisses the sway bar. And then I put a little paint mark right here. I guess you can't really see it in great visual because of this GoPro. But anyway, I got exactly 16 inches to this this paint mark on the backing plate. I'll do that on the other side, make a reference point, and that way when I put this together, I, you know, don't have to really do any mess with the alignment. It should be pretty much where it has to be. Just make sure not to bump the backing plate, right? Now I'll crack both of the 24 millimeter tie rod and nuts loose. And then use a wire brush and some rust penetrant to clean off this outer tie rod and castle nut. Hopefully you can get the cotter pin out and it's not super corroded like mine is. There we go. And then usually if you give the knuckle a good whack right here, it should pop out. Now I'm going to count how many turns it takes to take my outer tie rod right off. That was 16 turns. Now the same thing on the passenger side. It was 18 turns on this side. And now get her draining by loosening the two 16 millimeter flare nuts. Looks all corroded, right? Rusting through. Uh, nope, I just co coated that with grease when I replaced these lines a long while back. I love me some grease. Oh well, yeah, loosen those, uh, remove them, and get get a drain in. You also got to move over to the passenger side and remove this 12 millimeter right there. 
holding the, the lines in place. Once they're done draining, clean the ends off and put, put a cap on them so dirt don't get in there. Nothing like a good cap collection. Oh, they come in handy. Also make sure your O-rings are accounted for. The upper was still stuck on there. The lower is probably up in the housing now. So get those lines tucked up out of the way. A good amount of play in them. And then you can see why I'm replacing mine. The bellow is torn through and it's leaking pretty good. So I also had to shim this uh, a while back with some rubber because even the aftermarket bushing I tried didn't fit right and I had the rack sliding back and forth. Anyway, to remove it, two 19 millimeters over this. You have a vertical 19 millimeter bolt that you can get with a ratchet and a stubby socket up top like so. Real easy to get that one. This is a super easy rack, by the way. Uh, and then a 22 millimeter nut. And then on the steering shaft, you'll want to check your rag joint, make sure that's in good shape. Rubber looks good on this one. Uh, and remove the 12 millimeter bolt from this splined shaft. If this is all rusted, hit it with some rust panty first. Definitely needed the half inch flex head breaker bar for the vertical bolt, because that was, that bitch was on there. Now you also have to remove I don't know if you have to, but I'm going to remove this bolt going through because that gives you room so to, when you know, instead of sliding this off and hitting the sway bar itself. Hammer out the lower bolt, or if yours is stuck, you can get it with a 22 millimeter on the other side if it's rusted into the frame. And now I should be able to slide this back off and pop her down. Oh yeah, look at that. Yummy. So now do a quick comparison of the new rack to the old one. They both look the same and this is where on on these tundras they actually rust through and you can't really see because i cleaned it up a bunch already but mine had a lot of rust there and my buddy tyler had his rust completely through here and started like left him i don't know if he was stranded but it, it started leaking like i said when he was going down the road and you know he had no power steering fluid so normally i would say under this bushing put some lube to prevent the rust however that proved to be a bad idea when i did it because it actually allowed the rack to shift a little bit in there uh, so don't do that now you should replace this bushing but this rack didn't come with one so i'm going to just reuse the old one with my shim in there for now since that's simple enough to replace that during an oil change but a couple of assembly tips i like to use bell ray marine grease or any grease will do but go inside of all these bushings and coat them and lather anti-seize anything so that those bolts don't get rusted in the future in case you have to dive back in here and then so i like using uh, copper anti-seize or aluminum anti-seize is okay also on the uh, tire inner tie rod end and yeah really just lube everything that you put back on here and of course these splines you know grease the heck out of those too now for base alignment of this rack there's probably several methods that people use but uh, this is what i do this is not a keyed spline so you could put that coupling back on in any which way and you might end up with uh, three turns on the right and two turns on the left or something like that so what i do is put some vice grips on here very lightly so you don't damage the splines you could even put a paper towel in there if you want or just put them on super light and turn it all the way clockwise. With this spun all the way clockwise, I put the vice grips back on so that they're perpendicular or at 180 degrees. And I'm gonna put a little mark. This is not an exact science at all. Uh, but So what I'm gonna do, I wanna find the center of the rack, right? Roughly the center. So we're gonna count how many turns to the other side. It's gonna be one, two, three, three and a quarter, and so about three and three eighths. That makes it a little bit more difficult, but all right. So from this point, we're gonna go one and a half turns, which will, will give us the three, and then we're gonna split the difference of the three eighths. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So it's gonna go one half, and now I gotta go half of three eighths back over. So that's gonna be like right there. And we're going to call that the center of the rack. If I want to check it, I can count back this way and it should be the exact amount of turns. If you got a better way, then use yours. But now we know this rack is centered. With the rack positioned at dead center, you come inside and using a ratchet strap works pretty good for this to center your steering wheel and then lock it out. So it's perfectly centered and locked. And we know when we put the rack in, we're going to have a proper base alignment and the proper amount of turns from left to right. And now go muscler back into place, put all the fasteners on, and I think that tells you most of what you need to know to get going back together with this. So let me get going on that and then I'll give you some, uh, some other tips along the way. 
Oh, by the way, this rack didn't come with the new O-rings for these, so I'm gonna just reuse the old ones, and that shouldn't be a problem. And I guess I should note that most manufacturers recommend flushing out your power steering system when you're replacing a rack or a pump or any of the components. But since there was no failure in this, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, put that back in. If, if you had a rack gear go and it had a ton of play or problems with the power steering pump, you'll definitely wanna do a power steering flush on it. With those splines on and all of the bolts started, I think a good step is to go ahead and double check your steering and make sure the turns are proper. You know, so you don't get it all back together and uh, have an issue. Because this cannot be corrected with doing an alignment. So we're dead center and we're gonna go one turn, one and a half, and boom, we make it to almost, eh, you know, about yay that far. So now let's go back to the center. It should be exact same thing going the other way. So it's gonna be one half. Ooh, and not quite as far, but I'm gonna call that good enough. I could probably move one spline over. And this bracket, well, like I said, I'm just gonna leave this bushing in there for now, the, the beat one, but you wanna make sure the crack in it, the split is going to the bottom so any moisture in there can drain out. And then also you see this little hole right here, that goes on the top side because you can put this bracket on uh, upside down. Oh, it looks like that when it goes on. And as far as torque goes, I don't know the specs offhand. I'm just going good and tight. So if you know what they are, then uh, you know plug them down below and that can help some other people out. It's a good idea to clean the grime out of the threads of your flare nuts and always carefully hand start those. In fact, when you're inspecting your rack, it's a good idea to check these threads before you even put it in because that's uh, a very common problem I see at work. Uh, you know, new guys will cross thread those and then send it back to the auto parts store and then it comes back so you know and, and don't over crank these either because you will split that uh, aluminum apply anti-seize to both sides of the tie rod end threads and then spin them back down how many turns you took them off good and tight on the castle nuts then align the cotter hole and put your cotter in this is a stainless steel cotter pin i like to use those so less problems in the future and now to do my crude alignment check so i got the steering wheel centered i'm going to bring this down to like kisses the the uh, sway bar and then bring it over oh yeah boom dead on 16 right to the rounded edge there so now i can snug this nut down check the other side make adjustment if necessary this takes an 18 millimeter on here and uh yeah now we just gotta put the wheels back on and then we'll fill her up Fill it up, reservoir's right here, and it says right on the cap, use Dextron type ATF. So I've always just used uh, you know, any old ATF, never had a problem. Keep it in here with my other fluids and my hood whiskey, booyah, for in case you break down and you can't fix it, and you're stuck in the middle of the woods. So I got this Dextron 6, says it's compatible with Dextron 3 and all that. Yeah, so I'm gonna top this off all the way to the top. Leave about a half inch of clearance in there. And then go ahead and start the truck. If you have somebody with you, you can have them start it and then you just keep pouring fluid in there. But in my case, I'll just start it for about two seconds. Make sure she's in neutral. She got the clutch start cancel on the Toyota. And as soon as she starts, about a second or two, and then go recheck that fluid and top it off. So once you've started it, and then let that settle back down, get all the air out, top it off one more time, then go start it and top it off as it's running because you want to check this fluid level while it's running. Uh, and, let's, and then you can go ahead, since most of the air bubbles out of there, you know, go lock to lock. Sounds good. And burp all the air out of there. It took about three quarters of a quart to fill her up. And uh, yeah, wraps up the night. So I will see you Monday when we go do the alignment on it and we'll see how out of whack that is. After driving the truck, the line was off a little bit, the steering wheel was off to the right, so I decided to use the string method, and I'll just show you that in a nutshell. Basically, you need uh, two sem semi-strong items to be able to fix the rope to, and uh, tie the trucker hitch there, and then on the other side, same thing, just got a little ladder. And you tie it about midway up on the wheel. You know, you want to get it pretty taut, but obviously not so that the ladders are leaning over. And this brought some attention, something to my attention, because my thrust line is way off. Essentially, when you do an alignment, you know, there's no adjustment on the rear wheel, so we're aligning the front axle or wheels to the rear. And check this out. So I am two, let's see if you can see this, two and five eighths, and 
two and five eighths on the inside of the rope there to be able to get this line going straight across that rear wheel. And on the front, it's only, uh, it's only inch and a quarter. So I actually just made, checked my adjustments. They're pretty close, but inch and a quarter and inch and a quarter. If you can see that, there you go. So the alignment's pretty much you know, dead straight. You do want actually about 16th of toe in on each side for a total of one eighth uh, toe. But yeah, what I'm seeing right here is that my thrust line is way off. So that rear axle needs to be knocked back over this way. Let me check the other side and see where that's at. But uh, fortunately, that's not going to cause any tire wear or anything. This trucker hitch is a great knot to know. Real easy to uh, release. Look it up if you haven't seen it before. Basically just tie a slip knot and then run it through and do another slip knot. But real good knot to know. And so on the passenger side, got it set up the same way. Two and five ace two and five a gap to the uh, rim on the rear and actually on the front it's around the same i've got uh two and five eighths and then about two and three quarter almost looks good enough all right it's monday i just finished my first 500 mile trip some good news and some bad news the good news is the power steering fluid's still up to level there's no bubbles in there and the rack didn't fail. Uh, the bad news is I rolled underneath of it and it seems we have a leak. I noticed some drops, you can see them, and a couple drops on my driveway. And then you see the oil kind of blew over to that bushing there too. But I got some real bad news because I took my adjustable wrench and I went to tighten and check the tightness of these flare nuts. This one was good. Yeah, I turned maybe a sixteenth of a turn, but it was snug. This one, I went to snug it and it broke clean off. And now it leaked a puddle on my driveway and I'm sitting here by myself, holding my finger on the, ho the line and the hole on here because the, the welds broke. All right, well this is why you don't buy aftermarket. I should have went with a factory rack. Always get a factory rack, guys. These aftermarket ones are just not worth it. Aftermarket, rebuilt, it's just it's such a dice roll. All right, well I just called my neighbor Nick and he's on the way over with an oil pan. <laughs> So I'll just sit here holding my finger on here because I really don't want... I've already got that puddle. Knock wood, brother. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. So I'll bring that back. I'll no drop problem, it off brother. a little bit. I'll dump it out and stuff. And there you have it. Nothing like good neighbors, I tell you. Uh, so it looks like, yeah, that definitely... I'm really lucky that I didn't fail on the trip because that would have left me stranded. Well, I would have just drove home with the stinking thing and took my belt off maybe. or You, know, I don't wanna, you wouldn't want to fry the power steering pump with no fluid in there, but... Uh, anyway, this is uh, junk and I'm going to go reach out to the company now and basically be like, what the... You know, I can always weld that back on there, but this is BS. So what are our options here? Well, one, I can try to go weld that back on without removing the rack with the oil still in there and stuff. If I take the rack out of the Tundra, I'm putting an OEM one back in. So I was just looking these up. They're actually, I think I said in the beginning, I saw ones as cheap as 500. And that was the wrong part number. So uh, cheapest one I could find is $840 plus tax and shipping. And the MSRP is like, I think 1300. So my next option is I could reseal this one and get new bellows, but I was looking up Heck, the outer tie rod and factory ones, because these got play in them too, $172 a piece. MSRP is like $330 on them, I think it was. Uh, and, and just this housing, this is like $400, $500. I sucked most of the oil out with a pneumatic brake bleeder. And at closer look, this is not friction welding. This is actually uh, probably resistance welding, which is a robotic process when the robot puts it on there and then passes current through. And a pull is supposed to be formed, however, you can see no pull was ever formed and I'm surprised this wasn't leaking worse because it doesn't even look like that made it around at all. Let's tap the other one and check its integrity. Chances are this one's probably beat too. Oh, look at that junk. Oh man. Garbage. And let's see what happens if we tap the 15 year old factory one that's all rusted. No flex. Nothing. Nothing. I'm tapping it the same amount, and that didn't budge. So that's a proper resistance weld. You know, I guess I might as well pull this thing out of here and get the rest of the oil out of it before I weld it. And also, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to replace my lower control arms since these bushes, bushings have been torn for quite some time. Well, at least it only took like 10 minutes to pull out this time. 
Something else I'm going to be replacing is these front struts. I put these in, I guess, probably about two or three years ago. These are ranchos made in USA, they claim, but look how rusted the springs got. Uh, they actually are warrantying them out for me, though, because look at the lower bushing. That thing just got completely demolished. Let me get you closer up. Yeah, it's trashed. And uh, luckily, you know, I sent them a message and they said, yeah, we'll just send you some new ones. So that was cool. Looks good enough. Hopefully I don't have any issues with uh, porosity or leakage. And I just gotta do the other one. Those suckers ain't going nowhere now. That's how it should have been done from the get-go. Well, if this thing didn't need bushings before, it definitely does now. It took me like an hour to get this one side off. These are so rusted and pitted, they were seized in there, and you have to reuse these sleeves, they're adjusting sleeves. So we had fire, water, air hammer, quenching it, heating it, quenching it, and finally got them to break free out of there without bending up the frame or doing anything else. On the driver's side, I got lucky one of them came out, but I still have to heat and quench this one to get get it. You can see that, uh, so you get the bolt inside, then the sleeve, and then the sleeve of the bushing. Uh, but you do have to reuse these, and they're expensive if you mess them up. All right, guys, we got to talk real quick about these control arms. So I go to buy bushings. If you buy a complete Moog set online, uh, Chinese bushings, it's about $100 for all four bushings. You need two for each side. Your next option is getting factory OEM bushings, which... It's the best option because the thing about the Chinese bushings is, at least from my experience at work, they really just don't last. The, that chubber, the Chinese rubber, it dry rots prematurely and breaks apart and crumbles. And, uh, you know, of course you go poly bushings too, but forget about that. They get all squeaky and those crumble apart too, from my experience. So, okay, let's go OEM. Complete OEM control arm, a 240 for each side, or you can get the bushings for like a hundred dollars a piece, or I found them as cheap as 67 for the small one and 76 for the larger one. Uh, so that's probably the option I'm gonna go. But anyway, before doing that, I said, man, you can go online on Amazon and get both control arms for $125 with bushings already installed. I'm like, let me just order them and, and see how they are. And so poundage wise and, and quality of the build, this thing looks solid. It looks really nice welds on here. It looks good. And it weighs 1.5 pounds less than this one. Of course, this has some grease on it, but 1.5 pounds is considerable. Here's the problem. Uh, this is why I'm not going to use these Chinese control arms. And I'm a weirdo. I'm going to return them. I shouldn't have done this. But uh, check this out. I'll put this screwdriver on here. In the, I'm testing the tensile strength of the steel. And I'm going to take a scale, pull scale. We're going to reset it and... We're going to see how strong this metal is before it bends. So hopefully you have a good image of that picture. Let's go. No bending yet. Bit, tweaking slightly and boom. Now it's failed and it's bending over what? 50, 50 pounds. So very weak, very easy to uh, bend this metal. And of course, you know, you're not too worried about it. And sure, it would hold up just fine, but I don't want that... Chinese steel on there. It's like they throw lead inside of this. I mean, look how easy that bends right back. So if you hit something, because I'm really abusive on my truck. I mean, I, I do some crazy stuff with it. Now, on the Toyota one, let's throw that on there and see if we can max the scale out and what it does. So again, we were at 50 pounds when that one flexed. Let me bring it back to right where it was. So we got the same leverage. Okay, looks good. We are at 50, and it's we're maxed all the way out, and it's it's flexed a little bit, but you see how it flexed right back. This metal has a much higher tensile strength, and it's just better quality steel. You can flex it, but it bends right back. This stuff, when it flexes, it uh, it stays there. It doesn't really flex back. Junk. It's Chinese steel, and I'm not going to use these because. You know, I know I'm being a super crazy weirdo, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get the OEM bushings. I want to keep raw factory. I don't know what I was. Come on, what was I even thinking? I'm already putting an aftermarket rack in it. I already had problems with that. I'm not going with the Chinese. Oh, it's just so darn tempting. $125. You don't have to go pressing bushings, and of course that's the option for most guys. But just based on my experience, I'm I'm not gonna do it. I'm, let me just show this comparison one more time. I got my uh, one hand on it. I'm gonna give it one quick hit. Boom! Look at that. See how much that bent over? 
Japanese one or wherever it is made, USA, I'm not sure. I'm gonna give it the same hit. Here we go. <coughs> I'm pushing on that way harder than I pushed on that one. That one flexed right over. So you can imagine if you go off road and you bash a rock with this thing, it's gonna twist like a damn pretzel. Stop putting lead in your steel, China. Shit's weak. Gabbage. There she goes. We got the inside sleeve out. There she is. I just used this, this uh, rivet cutting bit and cut a slit across the bottom. That really helped the best. That, wor that worked awesome. Once I did that, it came right out. You could see why this would just never press out. I mean, even if you had the right size adapters, it's so rusted and cruddy in here that um, it's gonna be very hard to, to do that. And then clean the hole up. Just a wire wheel on here. Again, the, the little nicks and all that, superficial, not gonna affect anything. Decided to do a front brake job also, so I figured while these were off, I'd reseal my calipers. Uh, you, you can get aftermarket calipers or remands for like 50 bucks a piece, but I find they never last and I always see problems with them at my work. So I went ahead and get it. got a uh, factory OEM kit from Toyota that comes with everything you need. The wiper seals, dust seals, everything. Split these apart, getting them nice and cleaned up and uh, greased up real thoroughly with silicone grease. So that way, hopefully they last a very long time in the future. You know, it's just, those aftermarket seals just don't last as long as the, the factory OEM stuff. So, coming out good, and uh, there wasn't any major rust, just some rust and pitting beyond the seal, but not, not on the inside of the bore, so I get these finished up. Got the new bushings, Toyota Motor Corp, made in Japan, and, well, after cleaning all the rust out of this bore, I'm wondering if it's slightly bigger than it was originally, because check it out when you slide the bushing in. I can... It's very loose, and you can go all the way in that far. Now, that is a bushing design, because if you look at it, it's actually wider. Right on the end, I measured it with the dial uh, indicator. It's about 50 thousandths wider. So it only grips um, by hammering it in that last bit, and I can kind of tap that in pretty easily with a mallet and then tap it back out, so I don't like that. Uh, now, that does make sense why these get so rusty, because since it's not a super pressed fit road salt, Dust can get in there and cause corrosion, especially into this hole right here. And then that's probably why these things rust so bad in between. So what I'm going to do is, I, well, what I already did on this side, is I took RTV, Right Stuff Silicone. I rubbed, coated the hole inside, and then you coat the hole outside of this. And push it in. You can press that into place using a, a vise and, uh, you know, collar like this. You don't want to really push on here. But in this case, they, they go in so, you know, it's not that hard. It's just grabbing on the end here. And then that silicone is going to do two things. It's going to keep the road salt and grime out of there. And it's also going to help lock it into place. And then going above and beyond here, probably being a lunatic, but since I'm not exactly sure about this fit, I went ahead and just tack welded them right here. And I did that very carefully. Hit it once, cool it with water. Hit it again, cool it with water to make sure not to burn the rubber or anything like that. So that that's just crazy. Probably way above and beyond. But I just wanted to make sure because, God forbid, this thing does start twisting in here. It's it's going to be a nightmare trying to correct that. So anyway, that's uh, that's what I'm doing. If you're pressing it on with a vise, you do need a spacer for the opposite side. And then, again, the large one, you want to contact the steel surface, not the inner part. And then you can press that all the way home, provided you've clocked it properly. And... Uh, yeah, runner all the way home since when I took these out, they were fully seated. Boom, till that all splooges out and you're good. The RTV does a great job. Nothing's getting in there. And then the tack weld is risky business because you could separate the rubber if you're not careful. You know, on the backside, you got to be super low heat. Just tack it in there. Uh, but it just gives me a little extra peace of mind that this is never going to rotate in here. When you're putting these arms back on for all the hardware and sleeves, 
so these don't get seized up in the future, make sure you use something like copper anti-seize, aluminum anti-seize, or Bell Ray grease. I think I'm going to go with Bell Ray grease on them and just slop those all up. You do have to clock this washer on the splines of the sleeve properly. So you got to put it on a bench and make sure that these notches line up going across. The other side is key fit on there, so you don't have to worry about it. You just have to match this one to that one. Mostly all back together. Here's a look at the front brakes. Uh, these, these rotors, I actually had these back from 2015. Uh, these came off my buddy Larry's truck, factory rotors, and the discard 1024, so I machined them down to 1093, because that factory OEM steel is, or cast iron is so much better. Just look at the calipers. Some guys like to paint them. I like to just rub silicone grease all over them, and that, that works pretty good. Uh, some of the torque specs, the arm to frame, 72 foot pounds upper ball joint 77 foot pounds and i like to rub grease all over this after it's torqued too and everything the lower shock 100 foot pounds and the cam bolts are 96 foot pounds and what else we got here ball joint lower lo lower ball joint 103 foot pounds now i have torqued the ball joints but i can't i can't uh, you guys notice if you've been working on cars any bushings, you have to put the wheels back on and bring the car down to ride height before you torque them. Uh, it's very important, otherwise you're going to prematurely wear out these the bushings on, you know, you can tighten these down. But so, so anyway, so these bushings, these bushings, and the shock, I'm going to torque, final torque those. Uh, right now they're just hand loose. And final torque them when I drop the car down to the ground. So anyway, let me slap the rack back in and then we can do an alignment on this pig at work. I'm actually not going to be able to align this truck for about another week since I'm leaving for Las Vegas tomorrow. But I'm curious, you see how high these are right now? This is 8 inches to the fender. Try to get you a better view of that. There you go. 8 inches. And of course the, the new springs are going to settle down. Uh, I'm curious to see if that drops in a week just sitting here without driving the truck. We'll check here we are a week later. I'm back from my trip truck's been sitting and you can see it actually has settled down about three quarters of an inch uh, so the springs have settled down a little bit but check this out two things when I was installing these struts I mistakenly bumped one of the adjusters and broke the plastic on it so luckily it's not leaking or anything it's still usable but that was a bummer and then look how much the lower strut bushing is already compressed uh, I haven't even driven the truck looks like it's already getting ready to kind of do the same thing as the last one and tear it through so I think I'm gonna send this uh, clip or a couple pictures over to Rancho and see if maybe they offer a heavier duty polyurethane bushing for this uh, lower eye on this because that I could just tell that's gonna be a problem like the last one was here's a closer look at the ones that came off my truck again these were like two or three years old you can see how bad they started rusting and this bushing just tore all the way through and that started happening prematurely I remember it started looking like this one pretty quick and well it seems the new ones are kind of doing that already again so you know ranchers definitely got to upgrade those bushings and these do say made in USA on them but it must be of cheap parts made in USA there you go uh, because you know the factory ones don't rust like that and the bushings definitely don't tear that prematurely And here's where we're at. So I'll go ahead and do those adjustments. Of course the back's not adjustable, but this is what we're showing on the back. Thrust angle of 0.3. Hmm. And there's the completed alignment. Looks good. Before I put the pins back in the turn plates, I wanted to show you this. With the engine running, if you turn it slow, it's fine, but if you go fast, watch what it does. It starts vibrating. Let's see if I can get it to do it again. There it is. You see that in the video? Oop. Yeah, never did that before. Um, even, I want, oh. On the bright side of things, the two ports that I welded on aren't seeping or leaking at all, so that's cool. Here's a closer look at these new ranchos, and you can see that bushing is uh, compressing way more than it should. Oh, let's see if I can get you a look inside up here. Oh yeah, look at that. That is not going to last. Oh man, I'm definitely sending them a uh, message about this. Luckily, while normal driving, don't notice any of that vibration at all. So uh, I'll give this rock 
chance. We'll see how long it lasts. And that wraps it up. Luckily, while driving around, there is no vibrations in the steering wheel or anything like that. This ended up being a really long video, and whatever. I kind of tried to detail everything and show you what I went through with it. But again, if I was to do it, do it all over, uh, I think I would definitely go with the factory rack. But anyway, that was my experience, and hopefully uh, the video brought some value to you. So drop it a thumbs up or comment or any of that kind of stuff. Greatly appreciate it if you do. And I hope to see you again. No nonsense, no how here. See ya.